guys, it's Jake from Team Insanity, bringing you guys a video here. I'm going to be talking about speedball versus woods ball. Okay, not necessarily the actual game types themselves, okay, because I could really care less if you play speed ball, speed ball or if you play woods ball. It doesn't, doesn't really matter to me. I play both. I do, you know, I run around in the woods and then I run around and hide behind below up bunkers, okay? I really don't care. You guys see it both. I do, I play both. I'm not here to talk about, oh, you're going to go hide behind trees or, oh, hide behind air bunkers. I really don't care. I'm here to talk about the guns themselves, okay? Because people will message us saying, hey, Team Insanity, I have $700 to spend on a, on a woods ball gun, okay? Or I have $700 to spend on an air ball gun, something like that. So I want to talk about woods ball guns versus speed ball guns, okay? That's, that's what this video is more going to focus in on, is the guns themselves, okay? So when you hear woods ball gun, you're you're gonna think something like some tactical setup like this. Okay, this is a Jacob's old Titman A5. Um, it's got a nice stock on it, nice 20 pound stock, nice 20 pound barrel that doesn't add any accuracy. You have the the flappy, the swishy paddle thingy in here that loads the you know that's at least you know weighs more than my TFX itself. So um, here is what your typical woods ball setup would be like okay so i'm just gonna say me personally you don't need a woods ball setup to play woods ball if you if you understand what i'm saying i go out there on the woods ball field and i play a speed ball guns all the time the reason why i mean you'll probably never seen you go out there with like a titman i mean it's not that i'm against titmans it's just that it's not my style of play you might like dressing up all tactical and doing all that fun stuff and you know that's 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 great you go do you okay i'm talking about the people that are getting in to this paintball that are still trying to like find themselves i guess you i, I don't know but people that are always ask this question they're like what should i get it you know i'm look i have this much money for a woods ball gun i don't use a quote unquote woods ball gun because you can use a speed ball gun in the woods okay what really bothers me is that for new players, you don't need, I hope, I swear to God, I hope you, let me put it this way. This gun weighs about 20 pounds, and it has like a 50-inch barrel on it, okay? This isn't a paintball gun. This is actually Jacob's old airsoft gun when he got when he was like five years old or some shit, I don't know. But with a gun like this, you're going to need some bipod. And by the way, this extra long barrel, it doesn't add any accuracy, okay? You lose accuracy. I hope you know when you get a longer barrel after about a 16-inch barrel, you are doing yourself more harm than good, okay? So a paintball sniper is sort of irrelevant, okay? You have to remember, you're shooting 300 feet per second or whatever your field limit is. I'm shooting 300 feet per second too, okay? So... Where your, where your range is going to come from is, yes, it's going to come a little bit from your barrel and your marker itself and also the paint that you're shooting. If you, sh if you get a 22-inch long barrel, you're going to do yourself more harm than good because it's gonna, the ball is going to produce more drag in the barrel as it gets near the end, okay? So you have, there's like a sweet spot with a paintball, okay? It's not like a bullet. There's a sweet spot. That's about the 14-inch barrel. That's why everyone uses 14 inches, okay? 12 inches, again, a little bit too short, okay? That's why I, I always bashed on Empire with the Empire Axe and Minis, that the 12 inches are too short. You sort of lose range because the ball doesn't have enough time to get to get that forward velocity. The porting, it's just sort of the porting comes too early. I sort of I talked about it in the M2 review. I said the die barrels seem like they have better range. I believe it's where they put the porting and the, the actual barrel back itself is a long control bore that is a really really nice nice solid control bore with the tip it has a good amount of porting at the end to where it's going to make it sound quieter but it's also going to reduce drag at the very end so you're getting like an amazing amount of range to where if you use like a freak barrel or something it's it's port it's ported all the way to the very very back for supreme quietness or something like that so and, and I see that it kind of drops off a little bit, and I think it's because there's not enough back pressure behind the ball to actually, you know, keep it going in the barrel. It sort of loses accuracy. But this isn't a barrel. This isn't, you know, a barrel show. But that's sort of like a little background. That, I mean, it's basic physics, okay? So the longer the barrel, the more drag you're going to have after about 12, after about, you know, that 
good size control bore after about that eight, nine inches, then you're gonna start producing drag, okay? If you don't have a big enough control bore and your porting starts too early, all that air is gonna exit and then your ball is gonna drop off a little bit. So when you have a 22 inch barrel or some stupid shit, you're doing yourself more harm than good, okay? Yeah, you might be shooting 300 feet per second, but you're not having the same amount of air and you're having more drag on that ball coming out of the coming out of the end of the barrel. So it's gonna slow down faster and it's gonna fall. So 300 feet per second is 300 feet per second, yes. But it's sort of like, I'm traveling 200 miles per hour in a Lamborghini, you're traveling 200 miles per hour in a smart car. I got there first in the Lamborghini because I had better acceleration. Same exact thing. You might be going 200 miles per hour in the smart car, you're not gonna get there as fast and maybe you know the same amount of time as I'm gonna get there. Same exact thing with paintball barrels. I like relating things to cars because I'm a car guy, sort of, and cars are everyday life, so sort of people can relate to that. So again, paintball, sniper, you sort of have to throw everything that you know about rifle shooting out of, just, just out the window, okay? Because I, I shoot rifles, I've shot real guns, I do go deer hunting and all that, I own guns. But again, it's nothing like paintball, it really isn't. So if you're a new player, if you've already played paintball, then you'll know your paint and your accuracy is not like a is not like a bullet. You can dodge paint midair. I can look. I can poke my head out of a bunker, see a few paintballs coming. I'm like, nope, fuck that, and I'll put my head back into the bunker. So you kind of have to remember that when you're choosing your barrel. Is that it, if you ch choose a super long barrel, it's you're you're not getting anything. So you just take everything that you know about marksmanship and rifles and just just pfft, paintball is completely different. Okay, you're shooting a round ball of paint. 300 feet per second. Okay, so when you consider yourself a paintball sniper, remember, I'm gonna be shooting the same exact feet per second that you are, okay? So don't think that all, so even the argument is flawed as it is. I have a 22 inch barrel, that means my paint's gonna go farther than yours. The only way your paint is gonna go farther than me is technically speaking, if we throw the barrels out, out the window, say, say we both have the same exact barrels and say that you just have this cool sniper looking setup and you say, oh, I have a sniper looking setup. I'm going to be able to get you across the field. Bullshit, because for one, you have, you're shooting 300 feet per second. I'm shooting 300 feet per second. Our paint is going to land in the same exact spot. If you can hit me, I can hit you. So you sort of, so again, it's, completely different. It's not like if I'm shooting a pistol, like if I'm shooting a real pistol, real gun, yes, that round is going to drop off. I mean, pistols just don't last as long compared to, so, a real rifle, okay? Just because you have a gun that looks like a real rifle doesn't mean you're going to be able to shoot farther. So just throw that out of your head. So it, does, it, it doesn't make any sense. Same thing with when people add holographic scopes, okay? That's cool that you want to spend $500 on a red dot site. For one, with your mask, or if you add a laser sight, with you, with your mask, I don't care who you are. Unless if your laser is this fucking big, you're not going to see that across the field. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not going to see that little dot way far across the field, unless if maybe you're playing night. Especially with the mask on, you're not seeing that laser. So, if you're going to buy a laser sight, Jacob did it when he first started playing paintball. He had a laser on his gun. You can't... You can't see it. The person literally has to be from me to the camera away, which is about a foot, okay, for you to actually see it. By that time, you're both shooting each other, and you're not worried about where the laser's at. You're, gonna, you're probably going to hit them. So there's no point in adding laser sights and, red, and, and all these stupid mounts and all these stupid scopes, because I'm going to be honest, just because you have extra, extra sniper hardware isn't going to make that shoot more straight than this, okay? It's it's not. I'm sorry. I hate to tell you. You can spend a thousand. You can buy a one hundred thousand dollar sniper scope. That's not going to make your paint fly any straighter. Okay. If you have played paintball, you will know when you shoot your ball. Okay. Sometimes your paint might curve a little bit. If you have a little bit of oil or a little bit of dirt in your barrel, your paint's going to be going all over the place. That's why you know when you chop a when you chop a ball and your barrel is coated in paint. It doesn't matter if you have a $2,000 red dot sight on it. Your paint's not going to go any more straight, okay? I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, okay? You can spend all this money and have a red dot sight here and have one here, and you can shoot your gun like this and then shoot it like this. It's, it's not going to make you, it's not gonna make your balls go any more accurate. Same thing with your barrel, okay? 
your accuracy, 99% of it, is gonna, well, okay, let me put it to you this way. Your accuracy is gonna come from your paint, okay? That is where, if you're shooting shitty paint, and if you're shooting old, dimpled, dried up paint that you that sat out in the sun or that's been sitting in your room for a month or you bought at Walmart and it's been sitting on the shelf for two years, it doesn't matter, it, it's, it's not gonna shoot that good, okay? Like I said, it doesn't matter if you have a great red dot sight, it doesn't matter if you have a great barrel, but if you don't clean your barrel, if you don't clean your gear and you have, and if you have great paint it's still not going to shoot that good so you have to take good care and clean your gear so i guess you know it's going to come off of your paint i guess you can say it comes off of your barrel if you maintenance your shit so you have to take care of it so when people say i have this much money for a woods ball gun i kind of say that's cool why not buy a speedball gun because for one jacob when this thing is decked out okay when i'm playing a scenario all, all like sniper and everything, all that aside now. So we, we've kind of covered the sniper topic and everything. It's, it's, it's bullshit. Okay, that, that's gone. Anyways, first strike's the only thing that makes a difference, and a lot of fields don't. We're not even talking about that. So the first strike's out the window. But so this gun right here, as it sits, st it's literally probably double. It's, it's probably way. I would say, yeah, it's probably two of these guns, okay? That's without a tank, that's without a hopper, that's without the paint and everything else to go with it, and that's without your cool red dot sights and everything else. If you're playing a cool uh, a woods ball game like Living Legends, I will go out for Living Legends. There is a gameplay, I had my replay on for like an hour and a half of me playing, okay? I went out there with nine pods. I went out there playing for about an hour and a half, and I shot a ton of people but again, I was running around and doing a lot of really fun, cool stuff. I would have been miserable if I was running around with about five pounds in my gun, okay? So this gun, like I said, is probably two to three times as heavy as just like a speedball gun, like say the, the G-Tech or the Shocker, for instance, is the lightest freaking speedball gun out there. That's probably like four of a shock. This is probably like four or five times what a Shocker is. That's without paint and everything else. So. When people say, I want a woods ball gun, I say it's more beneficial to have a speedball gun, okay? The reason why is that if you're playing a long scenario, you're going to be miserable carrying around all this extra weight. I'm sorry. I, that's If you want to do that to look cool, you go right ahead. If you want to play Call of Duty, you do you, man. If you want to be a Marine, that's awesome. But I'm just saying in paintball, it's not practical. I'm not bashing you if you play that style. That's awesome more power to you but I can always guarantee you when the game starts and the ref say three two one go I don't ever 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 have someone with a titman run ahead of me okay I don't ever see someone with a giant titman that's that has to sling it over their shoulder and and they have to have a vest on to carry all their magazines and their that's not without mag fed but all their cool stuff and extra pods up here and they have to carry it on the tank in their back and remote line it because the gun's already heavy enough as it is i have never you will never see one of those people pass me on the paintball field it's just it doesn't happen okay if you are a speedball player you can probably vouch for this okay when the ref says three two one go 90 percent of the times unless if you got unless if there's a guy that's fit and actually does this all the time then sure they might take off ahead of you but they're they're not going to pass you they're they're not going to do it for long okay if it's a two-day scenario like living legends they're not going to pass me on the second day at least because they're going to be so worn out and so tired from carrying around an extra 10 pounds of gear that they don't need you don't you don't need this stuff, okay? You don't need a stock. You don't need a Picatinny rail with all this garbage on it that you're not gonna need. You shouldn't have to sling your gun over your shoulder because it's so heavy. That's not paintball, that's Call of Duty, okay? I'm sorry, you can do that if you want, but that's not how I'm gonna play. So when people message us saying, I want a woods ball gun, what should I buy? That's cool, I'm gonna recommend one of these guns for you, okay, in your price range. It's lighter. It's going to shoot faster than Titman. Again, this bolt weighs, th this entire bolt assembly itself weighs more, weighs less than just the bolt tip of the Titman itself. This is going to be able to cycle faster. You're going to get faster rate of fires. I'm sorry, the fastest Titman I've ever seen has gone 13 balls per second, and he had about 
$300 worth of bolt upgrades and swishy paddles and everything else. That that's cool. You can go buy a $200 gun that shoots that shoots faster than that. The bolt is physically too too big, too heavy, too slow, or it's just too heavy to, to cycle that fast. It doesn't happen. And if you try to get it to do that, you're going to be chopping paint in your cool sniper ass barrel that you bought, and you're not going to be hitting me all day long. So again, you're going to be miserable, okay? You can do it if you want, but that's not my playing style. I can throw on a camouflage jersey, put a pod pack on, put a black mask on, and I'm going to have a way hell of a more fun time than you are. Maybe, maybe not more fun of a time, but I'm going to be up in the front. I'm going to be nitty gritty in the battle. And I'm going to be shooting so many more people when you're crawling around in the woods 30 yards behind me. Okay? It happens all the time. It, does, it, just, it doesn't make any sense to me. This isn't, this isn't real rifle shooting. Okay? This is paintball. You have to get up and close at the enemy. I understand flanking and all that. But if you're crawling in the woods 30, 30 yards behind me, you're not going to do the team any good, okay? So again, you have to still play aggressive in woods ball, okay? That's why, again, I recommend something like this because you can run, you can snap shoot, you're going to be able to move very, very freely with this, okay? You can snap out. This gun is very, very easy to move and snap. This gun is not that easy to move and snap. Yeah, you can do it. But again, and then you also have the right fed hopper, so when you pop out of the bunker, you're just going to have this giant ass hopper saying, hit me right on top of it. So it's just, it's cool, but it's not practical. I'm sorry, it's just, it's not, you're going to, you're, you're not going to survive. I mean, yeah, you might do good, but you're not going to survive against one of these anymore. It's just, it's, it's not going to happen. I can guarantee you, you can hide in the bushes, but it doesn't matter if you're, if you have a 55 inch barrel or a 10 inch barrel. You're gonna shoot about the same range as me. I might get more, I might get you know a little less, depending upon the physics behind the barrel and the paint that we're shooting. But again, we're gonna if I can see you and I can shoot you, you're gonna be able to shoot me too. Same same thing. If you can see me and shoot me, I'm gonna shoot right back at you and I'm gonna be able to hit you. Okay, it doesn't matter if you have all these sights and all that stuff on there. So that's just that's breaking down woods ball and speedball guns, is that this just isn't it, it's not practical. Sure, it's cool, and you might have a bunch of new players on your dick when you get to this when you get to the paintball field, but it's I'm just miserable when I play like that. I'm I'm overheating. I go home early. I'm so tired when I get home. I mean, it's just it's not that fun. So when you're thinking about playing paintball and you play in the woods, just sort of think about this, okay? And just think, you're not going to be able to shoot and move and do all the and be as free as I am with my gun. You're not going to be able to get to the front as quick as I am. Unless if you really train, then you know what? You, you have fun having to train twice as hard as I have to and run around with five pounds, you know, an extra five, ten pounds on your back on a treadmill at home. You have fun with that. Um, that's, that's just not me. Um, and you know what? If you play that style, good for you. I'm happy for you. You know what? You go ahead and rock that. I'm not bashing you. That some of the best people that I know, some of the fun people that I know do that, you know. I recruit people like that to play in my scenarios all the time. I, I have no problem with it. I'm just saying you're not going to be able to shoot me out as easy as you think you're going to. So, and again, if you ever, if you're new to, if you're new to paintball and say you ever want to get into speedball, you're not going to want to go to the speedball field with a Titman with a stock that weighs an extra 10 pounds. You're, gonna, you're just going to get butt hurt, okay? This, you can go play speed ball with, and you can play woods ball with this. This, you can only play woods ball with. I mean, yeah, sure, you can go to the speed ball field with it, but you're not, have fun, just do your thing. So that's sort of how I'm going to break down woods ball versus speed ball, because people always say, you know, I have, you know, $700 to spend. Cool, you know what, you go ahead and buy all your red dot sites if you want, but just keep that in mind is what do you... What do you really want out of paintball? Do you want more practical and being able to play and move around and be you know, lightweight and being able to actually breathe and have fun? I mean, yeah, you'll be able to have fun, but if you're 30 yards behind me not in the action, to me, that's not fun. If, I'm, if I have to walk because my gear is too heavy, that's not fun to me. So um, that's sort of, that's, that's this. Um, bring on the hate comments for this. Um, but like I said, this isn't to verbally attack anyone. This is to the newer players that are just getting out there to go play. Um, if you're an established woods ball, tactical, Milson kind of guy, that's awesome. I'm not 
bashing on you. Like I said, I play with those guys all the time. I think it's awesome. You do you, and I'm gonna do me. But um, that's just to the new players. I'm trying to trying to tell you my my side, um, my opinion of it. So that's when I say when people always ask what I recommend. That's what I recommend. I don't recommend this. So you know what? You can go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, you know that you do you. So hope this video helps in, you know, sort of, you know, how I recommend things to newer players and that kind of stuff. So in my, my visioning and my thought process behind it, you might think differently and you go ahead and rock that. Or you can, you know, message a Woods Ball player or something like that, even though I do play in the woods. So, um, yeah, have fun playing paintball, guys.